human under the jersey and 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 really taking that approach to everything that we do and you can remove uh, athlete and you can put in student or you can put in brother sister or whoever um and, and really plug and play and and i'll follow suit with the uh, the embracing or allowing of the emotion that Mike touched on. I think that's absolutely beautiful and courageous and, and extremely uh, vulnerable to put yourself out there and, and have this festival, host this festival, show your emotion. And, and Sam, for the work you're doing, for all the teachers out there, for the work that you're doing, uh, amazing stuff. And, and definitely some silver linings here. Uh, access to one another doesn't happen like this. So uh, I'm going to introduce these two athletes and, and we'll jump into their stories. Alex, I have a long background with, uh, and we'll get into some of that, I'm sure. Kareem, this is our first sort of face-to-face -face meeting, although in two dimensions, uh, we've had a conversation before, but really look forward to sort of showcasing uh, your story and, and really just relating it uh, here today. Um, yesterday we started, and we'll get to this uh, just after your intros, but yesterday we started with the two really cool questions. Where are are you and, and what mood you're in. So I'll just follow suit with that today. I'm still in Toronto. Uh, we still have kindergarten going on upstairs. And uh, the mood that I'm in is, to be honest, like just really excited and fulfilled to be a part of this thing. And, um, and that starts with me, but it also starts with you and all of you. And so uh, here we go. Alexandria Town from Scarborough, Ontario is a kinesiology and health science graduate from York University, where she starred for the York Wrestling Club en route to becoming the the most decorated women's wrestler in club history. She won gold and is a world champion in the 57 kilo weight class. On top of her own budding career, she's an assistant coach of the York Lions wrestling team, giving back, going beyond self, service to others, uh, just a few of the human highlights of this uh, amazing individual. And, and again, I've had the opportunity to be in Alex's corner and David touched on who are you hanging around with? Some you get to choose, some you don't. Some are your family, some are your uh, clients or athletes or coworkers. This is one that's given me energy for so many years beyond the time that we've spent together. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Alex had a few injuries during our time at York University together and, and beyond. And uh, maybe we'll get into some of that in terms of adversity and recovering from those things. But uh, uh, truly honored to, to have you here and to host you and, and to, to be alongside you. Uh, Kareem, we don't know each other too well yet, but from Toronto is currently pursuing his master's degree in public health at the University of California, Berkeley. An aspiring public health professional passionate about developing solutions to some of the world's most pressing issues, ambition, ingenuity, and hope. Through meaningful research uh, and authentic human-centered engagement, he aspires to collaborate with individuals and communities in purpose-driven projects to help advance individuals, uh, sorry, to help advance innovations in health and drive social change. He's a 2020 Canadian Elite Basketball League champion, member of the Edmonton Stingers. He logged minutes in every single game of their championship run in a bubbled tournament that succeeded during this pandemic. Kareem, a pleasure to have you, man. A pleasure to meet you. And uh, let's jump in here. Let's talk about, let's start this off with uh, who's been in your corner along the way. Because I think sometimes we look at this like we're on our own and sometimes it definitely feels that way. Um, but let's start with you, Kareem, and then we'll jump over to you, Alex. Where are you? What mood are you in? And who are some of the people that have been in your corner along the way? Thank you, James. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you um, for this opportunity to share kind of the, the things that I've been through. And um, uh, Mike, we had a pleasure of kicking it off over these past couple months and um, getting to share my story. But I'm currently in uh, Toronto and in, in Scarborough. That's where I lived for the majority of my life. And um, I feel happy. I feel, I feel pretty glad to be here, to be able to um, be in fellowship and community with uh, folks and to share um, any little bit of wisdom that I have. And so I'm, I'm ready to get to it. All right, beautiful. Alex, where are you? Uh, what mood are you in? And then we'll, we'll go right down whatever road we go down. Right. Uh, well, good morning. Where am I? I'm, I'm also in Toronto. Um, not not Scrab Scarborough where I grew up, but um, living here in Toronto. Uh, I'm actually, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm, I'm used to sharing my story pretty often, but I guess it's just been so long um, because I haven't, it's been so long since I stood up in front of a group of people and talked really. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm, I'm also excited to, to talk to everyone here. And um, some of the people that I've 
that I've had in my corner that are really important to me. I guess uh, one of the main people would be my coach. He played a really important role in me um, being able to understand my mindset and take more control of it. And absolutely, James, you're you're one of those people as well. And that's why we've we've continued to stay connected throughout all these years. And um, I'm happy to be aligned with you. Awesome. And, and Kareem, how about you in terms of people that have supported you either all, along the way, somebody recent, who stands out for you in terms of being in your corner? I think first and foremost, my parents. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to have both of my mom and dad growing up and um, they were very supportive of me in, in my pursuit to put play at a high level. And um, they're also very, very strict when it came to making sure that I got my academics straight and in order. So um, <clears throat> they held me to a really high standard and I'm um, very, very thankful for, for them. And um, also just having a, a, a great support group of friends. Um, some, some of my closest friends were guys that I played with growing up and um, still friends with them to this day. We built like lot, lifelong relationships. And so um, those are some really uh, positive uh, relationships that I was able to sort of glean from during my journey. Yeah, beautiful. And and that trust of, of sort of knowing who you can talk to, knowing who's in your corner, um, but also knowing that there's a part of this that you take on on your own. Uh, Alex, you touched on mindset. Uh, maybe we'll work sort of backwards. Where your mindset is now and, and reflecting back through your career, where it was when it was beginning and how that shift in mindset either aligned, took away or added to sort of some of your personal growth or personal success, however you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So starting with where I am now, um, I, I mean, nobody can just say, oh, I, I have perfect mental health. That's not the case. Absolutely not. But I have a lot of awareness of the state of mind that I'm in on a day-to-day -day basis. And I use that to help navigate throughout my day. Um, and it can be something as simple as, oh, I'm really hungry right now. I know that if I don't eat, I'm gonna start get, getting cranky and start snapping at people. So before that happens, I'm gonna take care of myself and make sure that I'm in a good state of mind so that I can be successful. Um, and I've really, I've really applied this to my training as a wrestler um, because wrestling, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a literal battle against somebody else and you're, you're fighting. So it's very easy to get worked up and stressed out and frustrated at yourself, at your opponents. And as soon as, as soon as you're having frustrating negative thoughts, that starts taking control of your body. So um, over the years, I've, I've really learned how to learn how to control my mindset before it controls me. Um, yeah, and I think, I think that's the main thing that, that I like to follow. Um, so you want me to take it back to how, yeah, how no, I just began in, just in, Yeah, no, I think that's a great capture. Obviously, it's yours and your experience and, and um, in the now and acknowledging the awareness. But back earlier on in your career, we have, you know, grade seven to grade 12 students here. Uh, during that period of your life, you may not have been aware or you may not have been aware that you were aware or who knows how that works. But uh, in reflecting back on those periods, do you think, uh, how do you think that might work for you in grade seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12? Yeah. Had you had that awareness or how could you coach that into the youth that are here today and, and the teachers even that are, that are present and everybody that's here? Yeah, when I was younger, back in middle school, high school, I actually had, I had a lot of anxiety that affected my day-to-day -day life. Um, so I did struggle a bit and like I, I would get, I would get very anxious about things to the point where my throat would well up and I couldn't, I couldn't talk or I just, I didn't want to go to school that day because I was so worked up about something in my head. And that actually was something that um, stuck with me for a few years um, until a little bit further into high school. Um, I can't say exactly if there was like a one specific thing that started shifting that but I, I do think that when I started competing with wrestling and I started training um, I do think that it helped me be able to have a bit more control over my thoughts and like a little bit more focus um, one of the first things that I remember to do with um, like 
awareness of mindset and controlling your thoughts is, um, I think it was grade 10. Um, we, it was a wrestling practice at the end of practice. So this was just before we were about to compete at OFSA, the provincial championships. And at the end of practice, um, the coach had us all lay down on the mat and close our eyes or just sit with your head in your hands, whatever it is. Um, and he had us visualize. He talked through visualizing. Okay, I want you to imagine you've had a successful tournament so far. You've won your first few matches and you're heading into your, your gold medal match. I want you to feel yourself and feel, you're feeling good. You're feeling good. I want you to imagine yourself like going through your moves. You hit your favorite move, you take them down, you're successful. And he, he walked us through visualizing, okay, what is a good, what is a good match? What is it that we want to accomplish? Feel that, feel what it's like. Um, and at the time I didn't really, I don't know, I didn't really realize the impact of what we were doing but that was the first incidence where I, I was able to think about a situation in advance and visualize it in a controlled and positive way, as opposed to thinking about a situation that's going to happen and then thinking, oh my gosh, this could go wrong. Oh my gosh, I'm not prepared. All mm -hmm. these things. Um, and I wouldn't say at that point, I immediately, boom, I immediately learned how to do it. No, it took me years. It took me years, not until I was in university um, and I started working with my university coach who is now still my personal coach today um, and e even when I started wrestling in, in university my first year or two when I had big tournaments coming up when I had the um, the OUA championships or the U sports championships I would have practices where, where I come to practice and I seem perfectly fine like I'm, I'm functioning normally you know I'm wrestling but in my head, I was still, I was, I was very anxious thinking about, oh my gosh, I know I'm going to have to face this opponent or, oh my gosh, I know that I, I still have to um, get my weight down for, for weigh-ins. And then in, in practice, having these thoughts while I'm trying to, to focus and wrestle, um, I would, I would break down in practice. Like I've had practices where I'm in the middle of matches and then mm -hmm. like my breathing gets heavier, my throat, my throat starts swelling up and sometimes I, I'm crying. Um, and so my coach really helped me at that point because in that moment when that's happening, he, he'd pull me aside. Some places I find that some coaches, some clubs, if you're in a situation where you start breaking down, they'll force you to just keep going. Mm -hmm. But what, what we did was, okay, pulled me away. All right. What is it that you're feeling? Like, let's right, before, walk through it a little bit. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just starts with like calming down your breathing. Like, okay, you're emotional right now. Um, and then he, like, he really, he really forced me to think like, okay, what is this that's bothering me? What is this that's causing this reaction? And then I realized it was, it was nervousness for this, nervousness for this, things that are just building up internally. Um, and just by simply acknowledging that it was in my mind and distracting me, just to simply acknowledging, okay, this is something that's having an effect on me, helped me breathe a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the first step is really, okay, when, when you're feeling some type of way when, when you're having a lot of, I don't know, stress and anxiety building up. First step for me is, okay, acknowledge, how do I feel right now? All right. I feel this way. I don't want to feel this way. Let me like calm down my breathing. Why do I feel this way? Understanding it. Like, what is it that's causing me to have these feelings? And then right. once you reach that point, then you can start to learn how to control it and to like shift the way that you're having these thoughts. Um, yeah. And I think like, just, just to jump in, like, I think this capture is amazing because Jennifer Grant took, took the group, the youth group through uh, a breathing and like our meditation and mindfulness through the ABCs and you've touched on breathing and you've touched on awareness and then connecting with the, with the environment or connecting with somebody or having support. And, and I, I, all of those pieces are so critical. And I also want to just reiterate that that didn't happen 
overnight and it didn't happen in the minute. And I think there is this built up into us as humans, as athletes, as practitioners, as whoever, as, as, as all of us sharing this together, um, this immediacy, this need to get uh, it solved right away or be perfect right away. And uh, you've, you've touched on it so many times. It's a beautiful capture of this. And um, I have seen Kareem just nodding his head a little bit. So I want to get his take on, on sort of visualization and mindset just while it's, while it's uh, um, front and center here, because there's a couple of places I want to go with you both through your careers and some of your experiences uh, on the mat and on the floor, as well as like through school and navigating all of those different hats that you wear. But uh, Kareem, wherever you want to take that in terms of visualization or or mindset and you know how how that's uh, being exemplified in your life or utilized in your life or um, helped or hindered go for it yeah um well I think awareness or developing awareness is an ongoing process right I think um <clears throat> reflecting on where I was when I was in high school um I think I tied a lot of what I did on the basketball court to who I was and my identity and a lot of my performance or my accomplishments um, <clears throat> would sort of de- would give me my sense of self worth. And um, I remember when I got injured in my uh, my freshman year of college, I was sort of at a loss for words. I mean, it was just it was heartbreaking for me in in, in that moment because um, I felt like I didn't really have much to give. And um, because I was hurt, I wasn't able to play, um, there was a time of anxiety, a time of even going into depression where I was just like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be around um, because of the fact that I I just felt like I couldn't contribute the way that I I thought I was able to. And um, in reflecting, I think, being able to tie back to some of the the strong support networks that I had and, you know, calling my mom and my dad and and then also um, spending a lot more times with my, with my teammates really challenged me to, to think outside of what I thought I was. Mm -hmm. And um, now, I mean, I, I now know that basketball or whatever it is that you do doesn't define you. Um, And it, it took a lot of time to reflect and introspect about who I, who I really am. And, um, and, and so I think the message that I'm trying to get across is that um, the idea that you are what you do um, could be false. It could be a false narrative that you might even be projecting onto yourself. Um, and others might be playing into that a little bit as well, but um, figure out what it is that you are passionate about and that you really love. Um, I think the game of basketball and uh, just sport in general has taught me so many things about um, life and, and the lessons that I've learned to develop some of my gifts that are transferable outside of the game, right? And, um, you know, I'm very grateful for that, but um just to dovetail off of uh, Alex's point, awareness is was a big factor in that. Um, when I was going through some of those tough challenges um, during, you know, the injury and battling through that, um, taking time to reflect and to um, just find sort of my 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 hiding place, I, I call it. Um, to meditate, to pray, um, and um, rely on my faith. I think that was a a big component for me during those times where um, I had a lot of brothers and, well, teammates, I call them my brothers, but um, would support me. And I think that's another way of um, sort of coming together and and, and relying and supporting one another. So, yeah, that, that, that's what it was for me. It was really just really diving into who I was mm-hmm. and um, knowing that it's much bigger than the game or whatever it is that you're doing. It's um, yeah. seeing the bigger picture. 
Yeah, and and some great points, and and you're both, uh, you know, uh, significantly younger than I am, and I've come to this a little bit later on in my in my path as well, and sort of separating uh, from my identity as a therapist or a strength coach or a whatever, um, and, and knowing that it's got to start with an understanding of who I am. It's got to start with an awareness, and that doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look any way. It just has to look the way that it looks and feels to me. Just as you've captured uh, Kareem so nicely, and Alex, you as well, and um, some amazing uh, some amazing points points that I kind of want to maybe spin off of a little bit, but that identity piece as an athlete, that identity piece as the injury, or, or I, I no longer hold value because I'm injured. Um, all these different pieces are, are common and, and it doesn't have to be injury. Let's look at a failed test in school or a breakup or relationship. These are almost significant along the way. Um, your stories and your courage to share your stories, your, your peace of mind, your wisdom in your own Eunice, um, truly again, like Mike and starts with me like it starts here and then it trickles out into the environment and allowing others in to trust and and to be trusted really really great stuff I want to just take a, a little spin on things to showcase the the athleticism and and some of the things that you may face in in your athletic careers as well um, both so peaceful and soft-spoken and sorry my son just came down one minute <laughs> um Sorry, guys, is kindergarten gone bad? The, the iPad is in trouble. So um, he's we're good. No problem. Just let it play. Anyway, so just coming back around. Sorry, uh, just coming back around to that piece like that. You're so well spoken. You're so soft spoken. And then you transition to the mat, Alex, and it's like beast mode. Uh, and, and this this peaceful, soft spoken individual becomes pin the opponent get more points than the opponent and Kareem on the floor. I'm sure it's not, you know, quite as soft-spoken and peaceful uh, on the floor. There's a bit of a put on the super, super person, super man, super woman, whoever, and, and get out on the floor and do your thing. Um, is that a conscious effort or does that just sort of happen naturally with that? It's sort of similar, you know, you go to school and all of a sudden now you're a student for the time that you're in school and how you embody that. Um, uh, Alex, let's start with you in terms of how do you transition from where you're sitting right now to, to getting on the mat and you're about to go to Guatemala right at the end of the month for, for Pan Am uh, Championships. Pan Am yes. Championships. Yeah. So talk to us about that and, and how that works. Because I, I just want to sort of draw similarities to everyone's life, whether you're an athlete, a piano player, uh, a scientist, an artist, like how do we transition? How do we go back and forth from our normal life into our, our performing life in, in terms of uh, job, role, uh, athlete? Yeah, um, I, I see a, a lot of people assume that, uh, like, as a wrestler, as a combat athlete, that in order to get prepared for a match, I need to get like, oh, I'm gonna kill somebody. But that was never that was never my mentality when I'm on the mats, when I'm wrestling, like when I'm training at practice. I'm we got we have music going, like I'm 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 smiling, I'm making little jokes with my teammates, like even though we're, we're at practice, I'm still focused, but very um, like lighthearted. And so um, the reason I'm, I am that way is because that's the way that I perform best when I'm relaxed and I'm, when, I, when I'm in a good mood, as opposed to being like very intense, very hardcore. And that's something that I, that I sort of found out over the years. Um, we did this exercise that my coach had me work through, which is when I, I thought of like one of my, one of my bad matches, a match that didn't go my way for whatever reason. And he asked me like, okay, what were the things that you felt leading up to that match? What was going through your head in the moment? And during those matches, I was like very, very focused on the outcome. I was, um, I was, it meant a lot to me. And so I was thinking like, okay, I need to win this match. I can't lose it. I can't lose it. As opposed to matches where I did really well and had a good outcome what was I thinking during those matches? And I was, I was thinking, I was, I wasn't thinking about anything beyond the match. I was just focused in the moment. And I was just looking, I was just thinking about myself and I was just tuned in. So I, I can't explain like a shift between regular everyday Alex and, and wrestler Alex, because it's just, it's a transition that happens um, but going through the routines of like my warm up and and my warm up and everything, and then going through that and and sort of dialing in and getting into that mood, I just when when I'm on my match, when I'm in my match, I'm 
I'm tuned in and I'm just focused on in the moment. And I, I don't, I'm not even thinking about anything else that's going on ideally. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a, an amazing capture. Again, highlighting that this doesn't happen overnight. You don't get to go to wrestle in the Pan Am championships overnight. You don't get to be uh, whatever the thing is that we're reaching for in the future overnight. It takes practice. It takes consistency. It takes this awareness and um, uh, a beautiful capture. And you also said like that fun, relaxed piece. And that's amazing. I, I don't think you were here yesterday because you were probably training and doing some other things, but both Matt and Marcus had that uh, piece as well in terms of coming back around to why you're doing what you're doing and the fun and the drive and the, you know, the desire to, to participate and compete. Like that's the thing you want to do. It's, it's part of your why it's part of your purpose and allowing yourself to that relaxed state, although in a very tense environment, optimal performance. Amazing. Uh, Kareem, how about yourself in terms of that transition for you? Yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of synchronicity in who I am off the court versus um, who I am on the court. Um, they were kind of one in the same. So I'm fairly introverted. I'm pretty collected and um, how I conduct myself. Um, I'm not the rowdiest guy on the court, let's say, but um, I think that kind of reflects my playing style too. Um, I'm very consider myself to be very poised and um but that doesn't that doesn't say or, or mean that I'm not highly competitive I think that's what also makes me a really good basketball player is um sort of integrating all aspects of my personality um my competitiveness my drive my work ethic um me being a team player um and I think those are some of the skills that um, I, I embody or I hope to embody in, in my daily life, um, whether that be with uh, a group project that I'm doing in, in class, you know, I'm uh, try to be as rational as possible and, 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 and be as uh, good of a listener as I can. Um, and, and same applies to the basketball court. I mean, I, I, I'm trying. I try to be there for my teammates because we're all trying to um, strive for the same goal, which is whether it to be to win a championship or to win a tournament or a game. Um, I think you find a, a, a sort of bonding in that, and um, when when you find that, I think it's easier to rely and trust in that person, and. Um, it's some of the, the human centered skills that uh, I think we all need is uh, to, to show more empathy, to, uh, to have more trust and um, to work as if you're working for somebody else that's right next to you working towards the same mission. And so um, those are all the things that kind of get me fired up. And um, like I think about some of the leaders uh, I, I'm more of a leader by example. I'm not, like I said, the the loudest guy on the on the court. Right. And um, I think about like the Tim Duncan's or Steph Curry's. He's, you know, he 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 shows some emotion when he's, you know, fired up. But right. for the most part, he's pretty calm. And uh, I try to emulate some of those guys when it when it comes to uh, the basketball court. But really, just uh, I think it ties back to knowing who I am and. Um, knowing what my strengths are and knowing what I, I may not be naturally fitted to do. Um, and, and that's okay. I don't have to be the loudest. Um, and that doesn't undermine my confidence I, yep. either way. So um, yeah. I hope that answers your question though. No, absolutely. I, I, again, your, your, your willingness to be here and share this part, there's some amazing messages in everything that you're saying and some great feedback coming in and pouring in. And, and one of those pieces is um, uh, that, uh, uh, that I have, have tended to lean on lately is, is erasing success 
and, and starting with progress and progress will lead to success, but success can't happen without progress. So if we focus on the progress, the end goal will be matched. Whether we meet the expectations or not, the end goal will be reached through progress. And, um, you know, th this shirt that I'm wearing, if you can't read it, says it's in me, it's in you and it's potential. And tapping into that is the start, the end and, and the in between. And, and I read something yesterday, your superpower is that you're the only one of you. That's your superpower. And so if you know that more than anybody else, you're doing all right and, and you're going to be OK. You're going to be able to navigate a lot of these things. Um, shift gears a little bit again, just in terms of like recent things. Um, Alex, it's been a long wait for you between competitions, right? COVID has wiped uh, training availability. It's wiped a lot of things um, sort of off the off the. Um, the docket, so to speak, and now you're getting ready to go wrestle uh, at, in in at the end of this month uh, for a Pan Am Championship, and uh, and then Kareem, I'll come back to you with the shortened season. You know, you're used to playing a game, a couple games every week, um, and then you condense this into a little bubble and you play in like a tournament style like you used to when you were a kid uh, and win a championship. So Alex, we'll start there. Long wait. What have you done to sort of be successful through COVID? I know we're talking with athletes, but we're also talking with human beings and these, um, yes, these, these values and understanding who you are and all of these lessons that you're showcasing are universal human experience. Yeah, it has been as a wrestler, which is about as high contact as you get and as close proximity as you can get. There's been next to nothing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the past year, I've really, I mean, a large part of me not being so stressed out about the fact that I can't, that I'm not wrestling is just acknowledging, okay, there's, especially earlier, um, now I'm wrestling, but earlier it's like, okay, there's nothing I can do. There's no opportunity around me but also there's no tournament that I have to prepare for. So I'm going to allow myself to just take a step away from wrestling and continue with my strength and conditioning, mm -hmm. be, spend a lot of time outside, mm -hmm. uh, spend a lot of time helping out with my family. And those are still things like I, I throughout all of COVID, I was still able to do everything that allowed me to feel fulfilled um, and like um, emotionally and physically. Um, with my physical fitness. Um, and so now, now that we're, now that I'm able to create some training opportunities for myself, um, they're still a little tricky. It's like week by week. We don't, we don't even really know the practice schedule because everything's right. always up in the air. But mm -hmm. right now I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm getting ready for a tournament, but my mentality going into the tournament is, okay, I'm going to shake off the dust. And I'm just gonna go back into a competition environment. There is nothing. There's nothing on the line. So I'm not. I'm not. Otherwise, if I if I built it up, then I would be stressed out at the fact that I don't know for certain when my next practice is. I don't know if I've been training enough. Right. So so I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna acknowledge. Okay, I haven't been training much. Now I am a little bit. Um, we'll do our best and get used to that feeling again. Amazing. It's a, it's a cool capture because everyone's going through it and they're all going through it in their own way. And um, you, you have to have sort of an outlook on things that works again for you because somebody else might need to have that schedule. And then we might need to lean on some others for some help in navigating sort of control and where we find control or where we find elements of uh, understanding in the unknown, right? And schedules and, and condensed things and or uh, prolonged periods of, of waiting between competition in, in your case. Um, Kareem, the CEBL, the Canadian Elite basketball league you're a champion um but that opportunity was a little bit different right you're in a bubble you played in a condensed schedule um how did that change for you your mindset or your preparedness maybe physically and or mentally to recover boom there's a game then there's another game then there's another game and we're moving towards a championship still but it's this wholly different uh landscape yeah well just to start off it, there was a lot of uncertainty about the season even beginning and um obviously during the pandemic we didn't know when sports were coming back and so um my approach was to stay ready and to stay prepared um as as best as i could obviously wasn't able to get into the gym as much but 
making sure that I'm getting my workouts in, going out for runs, um, doing some ball handling outside and, and things of that nature, just to, to prepare for whenever the season would come, I'd be ready. Um, but it was definitely a, a, an adaptation, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. lean, being in a bubble where, you know, games are every other day, um, the season was shortened. So, you know, it's very intense. And um, we, we, we pulled it off. Honestly, it, it was, it was a great time. You know, obviously we ended up with the championship, but um, I think just going into every day, knowing that, um, you know, this is an opportunity that I get to capitalize off of and, and um, just finding the little joys, even if I didn't feel my best um, physically, obviously, like I said, as much as I was trying to stay in shape, it's a lot different from going into um, a, a basketball game or a, a, a season without um, actually playing basketball for uh, uh, months at a time. So, um, but just embracing it, embracing, the the challenges of having to compete day, you know day after day in practice um you know just finding the little joys out of out of everything i think it was really that perspective of you know it's another day another opportunity i would always tell myself um and so yeah i i i, I like i mentioned it, it kind of did work out in my favor the fact that i was with a great group of guys and we ended up winning the whole thing but um I, like even if we did lose, I was still grateful. I mean, it it was just another opportunity to do what I enjoyed doing and to be around a great group of guys. I think those were the things that I was really looking at that were fulfilling me. And um, so, I, again, I really have no I have no complaints. But it, it was just like I said, I really want to hammer home the, the idea of of switching your lens to looking at what are, what are the things that are positive? And yes, there's going to be challenges. Um, so embrace them. I think those are opportunities, again, to grow, to learn, um, to, to become the best version of yourself. A beautiful capture. I don't think anybody could say it any better than that. And, and your lived experiences, both of you and, and Marcus and Matthew yesterday, um, it doesn't all have to be hunky dory and it's not all going to be sunshine. But one of the things that I come back to with the weather and I use analogies and metaphors a lot, but like if we only appreciate the sun, there's going to be a lot of times that we're not happy. And so if we can begin to embrace the rain, uh, understand that it so serves a purpose as well, it really starts to shift, just like you said, that lens. So uh, embracing challenge, awareness, humility, consistency, adaptability, and finding opportunity in the face of adversity. Some amazing lessons here. I, I know we're up against it. I'd love to take some questions and stuff um, from the audience. So if there are any questions, please feel free to type them in. Um, uh, the last piece that I just want to touch on is that this also hasn't been flawless. Kareem, you touched on injury. Alex, you've had multiple surgeries, right, in terms of your career, and and you keep on going. You know, a torn ACL, uh, a Liz Frank fracture, which is a, a dislocation and and torn ligament in the forefoot. And for a wrestler who needs to who needs to shoot off that foot, not easy. So um, lessons learned from injury uh, quickly, and then we'll take whatever questions there are. Yeah, um, lessons learned. From, so my my first like big injury was my ACL injury. Um, and it was like right in the, right at the beginning of my season in university. And like that, that first week that it happened, I was absolutely devastated and like so angry and frustrated at myself. But um, once I got over that first hump, I realized, okay, I still want to wrestle. I want to be a really good wrestler. And so I'm going to do my absolute best to optimize my recovery. I, I'm going to do my strength training leading up to my surgery. And after my surgery, I'm going to, I'm going to give all of my focus to what can I do right now to optimize this as opposed to um, focusing too much on what I can't do. I was focused on, okay, what can I do? Um, and yeah, that, that was my first major injury. Um, I had a fantastic comeback from that one heading into my next university career and then it led to a, my 
national championship title and then my Pan American medal and like just the come off the, the comeback from that surgery was it just I just kept going up um, and yeah I've had other injuries as well I had a high ankle sprain had a Liz Franks fracture in my foot um, I, I mean you still you don't want to be injured it's a, it doesn't feel good it's not good for your mental health but overall whenever I am that whenever I, I do experience that I'm I just focus on okay what can I control and how can I do it the best way possible. Beautiful. Absolutely. Kareem, yourself? Well, I think Alex summed it up perfectly with that. <laughs> it's um, That's it. <laughs> controlling what you can't control. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was hurt, I think injuries, well, they're part of the game. They're inevitable. Um, and I mean, injuries in life happen too, whether it's a physical injury, whether it's an emotional or mental injury um, or challenge. Um, so when I was in my freshman year, I didn't look at injuries the way I do now, but, um, again, it was a process for me to, um, look at it and say, how can I use this as an opportunity to contribute and help my team? Um, being on the sidelines, I think you see a lot more than you do when you're actually in the game. And so that was a great learning opportunity for me. It was a chance for me to um, support my teammates. And if there were certain things that I could show them that they might not have been able to see while they're on the court, give them some pointers and um, just be an encourager, I think um, was a role that I, I sort of embodied during my time that I was injured. So. Um, like I said, it, it, it doesn't matter if you're injured on the court or you're dealing with some sort of difficulty off the court, whether that be at home or on the playground or wherever. Uh, it's, it's about looking at it as an opportunity, <laughs> um, an opportunity that you could use to, to teach you. Um, and so I, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. That's uh, great. It's beautiful. And it's where we started with Mike and uh, um, you've both captured it throughout this chat, whether willingly or consciously or not, you know, um, feel the emotions, allow them to happen, embrace those. And, and then here we are, you know, it's another day. It's another opportunity. Uh, some questions pouring in here, biggest challenges and biggest success um, uh, along the way, Alex, maybe let you take that one. And then, um, Kareem, which NBA player inspired you as a role model for your type of game? Uh, and then top five, top five in, in the league, your favorites. Uh, Alex, um, biggest challenge, biggest success in your career or in your personal life or wherever you want to take that? I would say my biggest challenge is, is a little bit more from like the, the politics of wrestling um, because, um, I mean, Wrestling Canada, like they, they can have their sort of favorite picks people that they want to support that they want to take to certain training camps certain tournaments yeah. and for the whole well it's still an ongoing thing now but for the whole beginning of my career I was never seen as an athlete like a talented wrestler that had potential and deserved these opportunities mm. so it wasn't until my big breakout year that I won everything in Canada and, and I was like okay you have to send me to this stuff now <laughs> um, yeah. that they realized and then I won a world championship title they realized like oh okay I guess we should give her some funding to <laughs> so yeah that's been one of my biggest challenges is, is still having to prove myself even if when I'm being uh when I'm being doubted biggest success was absolutely winning the under 23 world championships and coming home with a gold medal absolutely and and it's amazing so fulfilling for for anybody who had uh, yeah. a, a, even a conversation with you and to see you succeed uh on the mat away from the mat uh, always a beautiful share kareem um yeah your role model for your type of game and your top five uh players in the league tough one yeah well like i mentioned i really like steph i, I love his game i think he's um solely impacted the game um and I mean, the kids that are watching the game now, uh, a lot, you just see how, how much of an impact he's had. But I love the way he conducts himself on and off the court. Um, but I grew up watching 
Kobe Bryant. Um, and I just was so um, encapsulated by his work ethic. Like the dude, I, I remember watching some documentaries on, on Kobe and he would be up so early for workouts. He's like the first one in the gym and then he's getting like three workouts in in a day. Um, and so that was very motivating for me, like when I was in high school and um, just trying to mimic him, which was almost impossible. But um, I definitely wasn't getting up for 3 a.m. workouts. But, you know, I, I definitely seen the, the fire and the hunger that he had. And, and um, even listening to some of his interviews um, after his playing career and just him and talking about his journey and and the game of basketball and how it was sort of a gift for him and that um it it taught him more about himself and uh than than all the accolades or the the honors that he got it, it was so much more than that and i really respected that about him but um my top five players in the league right now um, so although I'm a Kobe fan, I am a LeBron guy too. So I like, uh, I'd be rocking. <laughs> a lot, LeBron, you're so, yeah. um, wherever LeBron goes, <laughs> I'm there. I'm just, I'm, I'm a fan. So, uh, I got LeBron in my top five. Um, I do like, uh, Luca on, uh, uh, on the Dallas Mavericks, um, Damian Lillard, uh, Portland, um, Kevin Durant and and Steph. Ah, beautiful. That's my uh, five. It's a great five and and uh, an all star lineup. An all star lineup uh, here today, guys. This has been um, absolutely fantastic, and uh, for sharing in this, for sharing your your stories. Um, again, our our purpose in in having athletes in having uh, this as part of the youth festival is to shed the jersey and show the human underneath there and and adversity comes in all walks of life and to share your story and the lessons learned and and all of these things if we reach one person uh we've made a difference and and you have you've both reached me today you've both reached uh, everybody here for everybody being here for giving of your time and uh efforts um in listening removing the jersey and finding the human or in Alex's case, the singlet and uh, and showcasing the human underneath it. Really beautiful shares, uh, amazing power in both of you in your humility, your uh, your peaceful demeanor um, and, and in giving your time today. David, I don't know if you wanna jump back in, but there is also a survey uh, for anybody who's ready and willing to do that. It'll only take about a minute. I think it's just a few questions um, just to pop on there about uh, this share, uh, amazing. Kareem, pleasure to, to meet you. Alex, great to see you again. Hope to be uh, hope to get beside you um, before you get away for for your championship run in uh, in Guatemala. David, I'll throw it over to you. Great, uh, James. Uh, thank you so much, Alex and Kareem. That was awesome. I have like with yesterday with Matt and Marcus. I have so, a huge so many notes right now with keywords: work ethic, quiet confidence, being a team player, service to others, role models. Um, Really inspiring from all three, so I really appreciate it. Kareem, when can we see you in a Raptors jersey? And why no mention of Kyle Lowry? Man, come on. What happens? Lowry, I actually do emulate uh, his game a little bit. Um, okay, good. But, uh, I mean, he'd be up there. He's in, in my top ten. Um, okay. And Raptors jersey, I don't know. I got a couple in, in my closet, but <laughs> okay. uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, and Alex, if I knew more about wrestling, I, I'd make some ref wrestling reference, but awesome championship. I love what you said about uh, sort of fighting up against Wrestling Canada and showing your worth. That's just, that's awesome. Uh, thank you to the teachers and students for attending. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, love the support. Um, as, there, as mentioned in the chat, there's another session coming up at 12 with Mike Stroll. We'll talk more about youth resilience. And then a 2 p.m. our keynote with Ross Robertson from the, sorry, Ross Robinson from the Holistic Life Foundation based in Baltimore. Um, two great sessions coming up. Thank you again, James, Alex, Kareem, to all the students and teachers. Really, really inspiring work uh, and all the best to everyone. Thank you guys. Thanks everybody for being here. Thank you guys.
Thank you so much for having me and for organizing this. All right. Bye, everybody.